Hi tutors, welcome to week 16 where we're going to be learning about tension and volcanoes and magma. So we'll be going over some of our week 16 science uh, memory work in our science lab today as well. I wanted to start with our Bible connection. I'm going to read a couple verses for you. These will be in our binder. Hebrews 13:8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 62, 7. My salvation and honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock and my refuge. So the way that we're going to connect these with our science today is asking our students, is the earth a solid rock? It is not. It is constantly moving. I'll be using these examples. These are my tectonic plates. The tectonic plates are floating on magma under the surface and they bump and they slide, they push mountains up, they cause earthquakes and sinkholes, they create mountains, but God is our constant. He is our rock. He is our solid foundation. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that is our Bible connection. I'll have that in your tutor binder. So we have two experiments this week. The first is stretch and really great, simple stick in the sand tools this week. Um, our materials are going to be a balloon, a permanent marker, and then also some Play-Doh. So the purpose of this experiment is to show tension stress. And this happens when the tectonic plates start to pull away from each other. So part of our vocabulary for Science Lab this week, we are going to ask our students to recall week 13 science. So what are some parts of the Earth? Some parts of the Earth are core, mantle, crust, hydrosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. And we are going to be dealing with mantle and crust today for these experiments. Our crust is divided like a puzzle and it's made up of many tectonic plates that float along the earth's mantle. So sometimes these plates push together and they make mountains. Sometimes they all push in on the side of one location. Sometimes they slip by each other. Um, all of these different movements are creating earthquakes, sinkholes, creating mountain ranges, and they open up the Earth's crust for volcanoes to form. So a tension force is like a tug of war when the plates are stretched apart. So ask your students, what is gonna happen when I pull this Play-Doh apart? What's gonna happen to the middle? What's gonna happen to the ends? Is it going to get thinner? Uh, is the center gonna drop? Is it gonna stay the same? So we're gonna pull our Play-Doh apart the tension force is going to cause a break. So going back to week two geography, we have the Red Sea. This is a really good example of tension stress. Uh, these are two tectonic plates that are moving away from each other and creating new crust where the magma is rising up from the Earth's surface in between the two plates. So here we have the Arabian plate and the African plate, and in the middle of it is the Red Sea. And here you can actually see a Google Earth satellite photo showing the trench in the middle of the Red Sea. And this has formed from the two different tectonic plates pulling away from each other. And that is tension stress. So for our tension experiment, we're just going to take a balloon with a square drawn on it. Ask the kids, what do they think is going to happen when you blow this up? Um, if they think it's going to change, will it go back to the same shape when we deflate the balloon? So here we go. <sighs> All right. So you can see that this is very light. But you can still see the same shape on there. It has been stretched out. So tension pressure is when the tectonic plates are pulling away from each other. So we're going to deflate it. 
and it does go back to approximately the same size, but you can see that it has been stretched out, and so it is a little bit bigger. Now, the physical property of the rubber of the balloon allows it to go back to a similar state prior to blowing it up. However, when it does this with rocks, we are going to get a break in the rock. If the force isn't very much, the rock can usually go back into the same position that it was. However, when the force is too great, now it won't quite do this with elastic, but when you're doing it with rock, when the force is too great, there will be a break. What this usually creates is an oceanic ridge, um, a place where the magma can come up and turn into lava. Okay. So then we move on to spurt. Now, the purpose of this is to demonstrate what is causing magma to move. Here is my North American tectonic plate, and here is my Juan de Fuca. This is named after an explorer plate. Here is what, let's see, let me try and get these. Okay, we've got North America here, Juan de Fuca here. All right. We have the Cascade Mountain Range in uh, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. This was created by the North American Tectonic Plate here and the Juan de Fuca Plate going under it. Now, as the plate goes under it, it is pushing up all of these mountains and creating the Cascade Mountain Range on the west coast um, right there where the ring of fire is in the Pacific Ocean. Now, because of subduction, which is the plate going under the other plate and pushing it up, we now only have about that much of the Juan de Fuca plate left. Now, the Olympic Mountains were created by the rock and sediment that was uplifted from the ocean, whereas the Cascades were formed as the Juan de Fuca plate hit the North America plate sending magma up and pushing the Cascade Mountains up out of the North American plate. So here you can see we have North America here on the edge of the ring of fire. Now for the tectonic plates that I showed you, this is the North American plate here. And right off of the west coast here is where we have the Juan de Fuca plate. It simultaneously creates a trench here because the Juan de Fuca plate is going underneath the North American plate. And as it's creating the trench, it also is pushing up the mountain range. And so that is why today we have a trench there and the Cascade mountain range. So you have magma. Tectonic plates are moving. The magma is moving inside. Magma is liquid rock inside the earth. When it comes out, it is then lava. Um, some glitter slime and some bags so the kids can actually see what's moving around. And then I will also have the um, toothpaste, My Little Pony, um, to demonstrate the number 132 spurt from the Van Cleves book. This will be in your binder. So a dike is when it's going to move straight up. A sill is when the magma is moving horizontally. So in our crust, so we have the dike going up, it's going vertically straight up, and then the sill, it'll start to move under the crust horizontally. And then we get to the lacolith. So here's a good example of showing a dike where the magma is going straight up. And then in this example, it forms a lacolith. Now, the magma does not actually exit the Earth's surface in this. A lacolith is like a mushroom dome that forms a rock structure. And here is an example of a lacolith that was formed using the method we just saw. This is in Montana, and what happened here is the magma pressure came up through the earth. It ballooned, pushing the rock up and forming this rock structure. Now this is a hardened dome-shaped pool of magma that is inside the earth. And as the lacolith forms, 
the layers of rock are pushed up just like when we use our toothpaste tube. This is a half full tube of toothpaste. We can start to push it and the reason this is such a great example is that it moves in so many different ways. So when you have magma, when you push, see how it's going out horizontally here? But then you also have toothpaste going up, which is forming the dike. You have pieces of it going off, going horizontally, and you just keep moving, keep moving, and the pressure causes some of it to go up to the top and some of it to move horizontally and vertically. All right, thank you guys for watching. Everything will be in your tutor binder and I've done it a little bit differently this week, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible when you have a room full of students, but I've highlighted where there is something you're supposed to do. So for the Bible connection, you know, obviously read and then ask. Um, introduce the experiment and then show the print offs that I have. Um, show the Play Doh, show the balloon. So, hopefully, this will make it easy to do when you've got uh, a lot of students to wrangle in and get their attention.